Hey everybody, I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. And this is such a special video for me to do today. This week we went to three thrift stores and I found the most wonderful things and I can't wait to show you what I found and where I put them in my home and why I think they're so lovely. And I also want to introduce you to a woman named B. I found a beautiful watercolor painting that she did and when I went to track this lovely lady down, I found out that she passed away nine years ago, but even so, I want to introduce you to her. And I'm pretty sure that B has a message for all of us here. And I am so excited for you to go on this journey with me today. Oh my goodness, look at these panels. I haven't seen anything like this since I was a kid. They're in perfect condition, all four of them. They're selling them for $15 a piece. Absolutely incredible. If I had a house, I would buy these in a heartbeat. Love is all you need. Have you ever tried to pay your electric bill with love? It just doesn't seem to work. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh my gosh, isn't that fantastic? Jazz, the happiest night of the week for me. Sunday night, jazz night. This is such a beautiful dress. I've always wanted to try it on. It's so lonely here. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That looks like a Kathleen Cheney Fritz. That looks like an original, but that is beautiful. The woman who painted this left a little note on how to hang it. And here's her name and address. I wonder if she still lives there. And I said, I loved you. And he said, I didn't know you felt that way. Maybe things could have been different. It was just bad timing. Mom said her mother told her to get a basket, write down all her regrets, and throw them in the basket, and then one day at the end of the year, burn them all. I have so many ladies here on this channel that would love to have that, to decorate their family room with it. Oh my goodness. He never said he liked to see my smile or hear my voice one more time. He just looked at me and said, you're so talented. You're just so talented. One of my very favorite things to score at the thrift store are beautiful, exquisite trays. And if you have ever been in Hobby Lobby or even Walmart, a tray will run you like $30, $40. Are you kidding? Well, I did score this amazing, beautiful tray. And one of the reasons that I love trays 
is they can elevate the ambiance of any room. If you place a tray on your bed, on your nightstand, on your coffee table, wherever, it just raises up that vibe of the room. You can color coordinate it. You can put anything on that tray that speaks to you, something that maybe tells your story to your guests. But I just love it. This one was so beautiful. The design was perfect. It's brand new. It's marked $32 on the bottom. And well, I, I just fell in love with it. I was so happy to get it. And I did almost have to get into a fight over it with a woman. I can't believe it. I was kind. I really was. But I wanted that tray and I wasn't giving it up. This is another basket that I saw that I fell in love with. And as soon as I saw it, I thought this would be perfect for the bathroom. You could put your makeup brushes or your cotton balls, your Q-tips, or I don't know, Desi's milk bones. I don't know. But anyway, it's beautiful. And I love it. I love the design. Butterflies. It's painted exquisitely. You could put this on a balcony. So I just loved it. It kind of goes with my butterfly chair. So I scored it. I think this was $2.99. so happy this week. I found two amazing jazz paintings and I grabbed them up so fast. I guess it was pretty obvious, but you know, we were talking a couple weeks ago about how our life as we age becomes a little bit smaller. We lose family, we lose friends. And what I have done is no matter how bad I might feel on Sundays, I dress up. I make myself get in that shower, put on my lipstick, put on my very best outfit, shine my shoes, kind of, and I get to that jazz club and I have a wonderful time every single time. So jazz night is something that is very special to me. And so when I see something that depicts that joy that I feel, then I grab it. So I was really excited to get this. I think it's just so cute and I have the perfect spot for this print. If you were watching the beginning of my video, the montage, you saw how I kind of lost my mind when I saw the jazz painting of the musicians on wood and I got that in my cart so fast and I want to show you what it looks like on my living room wall. So excited to pick up this vase. My mama used to collect McCoy pottery and I think that this is early McCoy. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to research this but I grabbed it fast. It was $3.99 and I'm not exactly sure what this is worth but I'm going to try to find out. But it's a lovely pattern. It's in perfect condition. It is old. You know, I love this beautiful dish. I've never seen anything like it. And as soon as you pick it up and look at it, you start confessing your life. I don't know what it is. Anyway, on the back, it just has a signature. I've never seen anything like it. I can't find it online. I don't know the story of this, but it's so unique. I had to have it. You know, I watch a lot of thrifting videos and I honestly believe that one of the unsung treasures of the thrift store are picture frames. Some of the most beautiful, exquisite frames that I own, I got from the thrift store. This beautiful glass and crystal frame. And I picked up a couple this week that I love. 
And this one has a little saying on it about love. And I put a picture of my grandson Wyatt in it. Once you slip that beautiful picture of somebody you love in that frame, it, it elevates it. It makes it so beautiful. And maybe you have the same pictures, but put, put those pictures in a new frame. And it's like you have all brand new pictures again. And you know, when your loved ones come visit you and they see themselves in these beautiful frames, what do you suppose they think? Wow, she really does love me. was so emotional for me. I've done over 80 thrifting videos and they've all been wonderful and special and I love it that you go with me and we have so much fun. But this week was different. This week stands out. I went on a journey yesterday where I started out on a beautiful tree-lined street and I ended up on a ball field crying as the church bells rang. <laughs> And I want to take you back to the beginning of how this journey for me started. I'm in the thrift store and I see this beautiful watercolor and it looks like a Kathleen Cheney Fritz painting. She's a famous painter in my city. She sells her paintings for thousands of dollars and this painting looked like hers so I grabbed it fast. Well, imagine my surprise. I turned it around and it wasn't by Kathleen. It was by a woman named Beatrice Zuppa. And not only was her painting signed, but she had tucked a, a little note, instructions on how she wanted her painting to be cared for and, and hung. And for some reason, seeing her handwriting touched my heart. Her handwriting reminded me of my mother's handwriting. And I also saw her address and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to look her up and maybe she'll talk to us about her, her beautiful, beautiful watercolor. Beatrice and James Zupa, sweethearts separated during World War II and finally married in 1967. Jim and B died within two days of one another last week. He at age 92 and she at 88. I got home and I found out that B had passed away in 2013. I found her obituary and I started reading about her life. I started reading uh, about the tributes the family members were leaving for her and friends. And I got this amazing flavor of who B was. I had never felt that way before. She was such a beautiful woman. She died when she was 88 and she died two days after her husband died. And she met her husband when she was in high school and they were high school sweethearts. And they, apparently they just loved each other so much. But then World War II happened and it took him away. She didn't see him again for 25 years. She married someone else and she had two children, but they found each other again in the 60s. Uh, apparently she had such a rough time with, with her first marriage and there he was, her knight in shining armor. And they married and they stayed married for years and years and everybody who knew them said they were the most amazing example of a true love story. He was a charming math teacher that played tennis with a great sense of humor. She was a secretary for a doctor, but in her spare time her real passion was painting and reading her New Yorker magazine. But it was her passion for painting. And her neighbors said that 
She painted over 200 paintings. They were everything to her. They were the thing that kept her grounded, the thing that kept her going when life got very tough for her family. And I, I gathered such strength in knowing that. B was so beautiful because of the person that she was. She was so willing to help everybody. So I'm reading all these things about this beautiful woman that looked like Grace Kelly, really. And so I decided yesterday I would set out and I wanted to go to her street. I wanted to see if maybe I could see the flowers that she painted. I wanted to see the trees that she saw every day. I wanted to, to look at the street that she might have walked down. I don't know why, but it's around where I used to grow up. And I saw that her church was Blessed Sacrament, and that was across from my grade school, but I, I never put that together. So I'm setting off, right? And I get to her street and I am filming and I am just filled with this feeling of just, it feels like magic. It feels like I'm just floating on air. I don't know what was going on because I wasn't smoking anything, <laughs> but it felt magical. And so I'm filming everything on the street and then I was going to go home, right? And I decided, well, you know, I'm just going to take a left. My grade school is up there and, you know, I just want to drive by, you know, just sort of a touchstone for me. And I found myself going into my grade school and parking, not realizing, I promise, not realizing at the time that Bee's church was across the way from my grade school. And I never would have put that together, but as soon as I stepped on that playground, the church bells started ringing and my tears started flowing. And all I could think of was, this is a sign. This is a sign. And I saw these beautiful dogs running and the sun was shining. We haven't seen the sun here in weeks. This was Bee's church. And as soon as I came, the bells started to chime. And so I was so, so grateful I had my camera and I was turning to leave. And then out of nowhere, the bells started to chime again, like, like they were playing a song. And so I decided I would move towards those bells. So I'm walking on this field I had not walked on since I was 10 years old. And it was the most wonderful feeling in the world. It was like B was right there holding my hand saying, I have a message for you. And I want you to tell the world my message. And that's why I wanted to bring her to life for you today. I've talked to some friends who have suggested I try to find Bee's children to return the painting to them. When I looked for her son, I found that he died last year in the same week that my Bill died. He was 70 years old and the daughter, there's no trace to be found of what happened to her. What I took away from Bee's story is her creativity. Her artwork opened up a whole new world for a woman she would never meet. I took her artwork and I was filled with joy, but also I learned the lesson to be very, very careful with what you create because what you create will be your voice for generations to come. It is a responsibility and it is a weight and it is a joy. Have fun with it, but realize that it will be your voice. And maybe the reason we become more creative as we get older is because we care more about what we leave behind. That's the lesson that I took from her story. 
the lesson that you take from this story will be your own and I won't know what it is. But I hope you'll tell me and I hope you'll share it because I don't believe in accidents. I don't think any of this just happened for a lark. I was, I'm, a, I'm a grown ass woman standing on a ball field crying tears of joy. Why? I think I need you to tell me that. So I'm so grateful I got to introduce you to B, and I'm so grateful I got to learn probably one of the most important lessons I will ever learn in my life. That right there is Blessed Sacrament. That was B's church. I was getting ready to leave and the bell started to chime again. And the dogs are running. <laughs> I'm sitting here crying in the middle of this ball field that I haven't been on since I was 10 years old. And I listen to the church bells ring and the dogs run and the ladybugs come out and say hi. It's really quite an emotional day and quite a beautiful hello from B to all of us. This left a little note on how to hang it. And here's her name and address. Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I really did love every minute of this week's video. It was so special to me. And let me know if there's any part of Bee's story that speaks to you. Please have yourself a wonderful, safe, brand new week. And when you're done with that week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right. It's a deal. We will be here.